This is my 2019 Chinese electric sport bike. Long story short, I ordered this on January 9th, 2019, and I got it six months later in June of that year. I had paid twice as much for an upgraded version, but they sent me, the Chinese seller, a lot of you guys know, sent me the wrong model. They sent me the base model that was less than half as much as I paid. So I'm a little bit salty over all of that still. <laughs> so the general specs of this bike as it sits today after all the upgrades we did to it, is as follows. This battery pack in here we built out of three separate battery packs. It is an 11.14 kilowatt hour battery pack. The motor on this is a 21,000 watt peak output. The top speed on this, as we found out last video, is 73 miles per hour. But I will say the tire on here is lower profile than the original one, so top speed would be reduced. Estimated range on this battery pack, I haven't run it from all the way full to all the way empty yet, but based on our calculations and the math, this thing is, is estimated to go about 130 miles per charge, and that's pretty decent throttle pretty much the whole time. So that puts this bike right in the middle category of zero motorcycles. Lots of you guys have said, but how does it compare to a zero motorcycle or you know a name brand electric motorcycle? This actually beats out a couple of those models. So in terms of performance, this thing is actually pretty respectable. So this motorcycle actually has faster acceleration and significantly larger battery pack than the DS model and the S model zero but it's beat in both categories by the SR and the SRF. Also, a lot of people were um, comparing this to the Suron electric motorcycle, uh, which this thing beats very handily in all regards. This thing is twice the speed, has twice the range, and it's five times more powerful than the Suron X model. So how much does this thing cost to build? That is the question today. I, I broke it down into two different categories. The actual build, like the parts that I needed to make this thing give me the performance that I wanted it to. And then I also broke it down to appearance because I did some appearance mods, some speakers, so, like a GPS, that kind of stuff that you wouldn't need to add. So we'll go over the build category first. So the bike all said and done, when I got it home, it cost me $2,891. But if you guys watch my how I bought this bike video, I'll link it up here for you guys. There was a lot of shipping and customs fees and all kinds of stuff that I didn't know about originally. I got the bike for $1,500 plus $180 shipping. So I thought it was gonna be a $1,700 motorcycle, but I got slapped with almost twice as much as that, you know, with fees, storage fees, like customs, brokers, fees, all that kind of stuff. So in total, this cost me $2,891 for the base model piece of, like, you know, POS bike. <laughs> Still salty still salty about all that. The motor, 8,000 watt motor, Kelly controller and that kit that I got, the upgrades for this bike, um, that cost me $1,353.74. But I also, I didn't know this either. I had to pay a customs fee when it got into the US. FedEx called me, they're like, hey man, you know, I got, we got your motor over here, but you know, this, it got flagged by customs. So if you could like give us like, you know, $325.01, that would be just great. So I had to pay FedEx $325.01 for custom. So in total, the kit, the, the motor, the controller, the throttle grip, that kit that I got, that was $1,678.75. All right, so moving on, we built two different battery packs and we actually were able to salvage the original defective lithium ion battery pack that came in this thing. Um, so we have three battery packs total. They're all wired in parallel to each other to build one big massive battery. But the first battery pack was $645.02. That's also factoring in a couple things like we need to get a spot welder, that kind of stuff. Second battery pack was $581.52. Battery materials was $35.52. The BMS, battery management system that we bought, $29.43. Nickel strips for building the battery pack was $100. Uh, we also had to get two gauge wire to upgrade the wiring throughout this bike. So it's two gauge wire was uh, $50 and 53 cents. Probably a, a total of $1,400 to build two lithium ion battery packs. Those were 72 volt 40 amp hour battery packs, by the way. We got battery chargers to test out the original uh, cells that were in the bike to begin with. Those were $60.26. We bought two of them. Um, we also had to get you know wire connections, crimp stuff, that kind of jazz. That was $22.66. So we did have to buy another charger for this thing. The one they sent me from China completely fried itself, so I had to get a replacement, and that one didn't even do a good job. So I had to get a brand new charger with this battery pack, everything. Um, that was $61.21. 
I also did have to get the rear tire because this, this motor came with the rim and everything, but it didn't have a rear tire installed on it. So I got the rear tire for $87.54. I did have to mount it myself. I had to do the zip tie method because the spoons weren't working out too well. It's getting too tight at the very end and we couldn't get it over you know, the last push. So I did mount that myself because also the motorcycle shop that I took it to had never seen one of the, they had never heard of a hub motor before like this and they said they couldn't mount it and they were looking at me like I was some like witch doctor voodoo master. Anyway, um, we had to buy some 12 gauge wire as well. That was $32.37. Miscellaneous battery expenses I put at $155. And we also just did order a cooling fan as well for the controller because it seems to be overheating. We haven't figured it out just yet. So we did order a cooling fan for $16.14. But because we haven't worked out everything just yet 100%, I did tack on another $100 of miscellaneous expenses. So that's it for the build, the actual upgrades we did to this bike. So moving on to appearance upgrades, we did put on a speaker system on this thing, which is really cool. A lot of you guys have said I should put like motorcycle sounds on and whatnot. I'm still trying to integrate that. I downloaded RevHeads app and all that kind of stuff, but I can't find one that will integrate well with this because I can't plug it into an OBD2 port like they recommend and whatnot. So I'm trying to find one that has like GPS, like measures your speed based on GPS and just does like motorcycle rev sounds to match your speed pretty much. I'm still trying to work that out. I think that'd be pretty cool. But we did add a speaker system. So the DC to DC converter and the amplifier we installed, um, both those were a total of $44.25. Two speakers, these are marine grade speakers, by the way, waterproof and all that good stuff. The speakers were $35.62. I also did add some mirrors onto this bike and these were $25.14. I also did add a tank pad I bought on Amazon a few days ago. That was $8.59. I also did put a GPS unit in here, which looks amazing. And I hardwired it in so it turns on when I turn the ignition on and turns off when I turn the ignition off. Looks amazing. That was $64.77. And that wraps it up. That was the last expense on the sheet. <laughs> oh man, oh boy. The total, what it cost me, and I'll get into a, a caveat of this in just a second, but what it cost me out of pocket, dollars spent, was $6,725.50. That's a chunk of change. But again, this is mid-class zero status, which mid-class zeros go for like 15 grand. Okay, so I got this one for you know, $6,725. So still not a bad, bad price for a bike, right? But as I said, there were a lot of fees trying to get this bike that I could have avoided in hindsight. I, I didn't, this was the first time pretty much anybody online on the internet had done this, like imported it from China, went and picked it up from the customs warehouse, you know, there and whatnot. So I got slapped with a lot of fees and it was a completely different world that I had entered into when I drove up there it was no clue what was going on. It was so different from anything that goes on in just normal life. But anyway, fees on that were significant. So without those fees that I could have avoided, I still factored in customs fees and all that kind of stuff. This build would have only been $5,825. So $900 less expensive. So for, you know, for under $6,000, I think this for the performance and what you get is a very, very good price. So it surprised me, but still a good deal. I mean. If you do the work, put the work in yourself, it's one of a kind too. Like I'm proud of this thing, you know, that's a huge accomplishment. But yeah, that's pretty much it guys. The bike, upgrade kit, battery packs, you know, speaker system, chargers, tire, that kind of stuff all came out to $6,725, 50 cents. So not too bad. All right, well, so there you guys have it. It was a pain to get this thing and, and it was not fun and there were lots of fees that nobody told me about. But also in hindsight, I would have ordered the base model to begin with so I wouldn't be fronting all that cash immediately to get the base model, you know what I'm saying? So I would have bought that. And so in hindsight, after all this stuff, this bike sitting in front of me with good performance, zero motorcycle performance, mid category zero motorcycles, I could have got this thing for $4,940.90. So I'll let you weigh that. I'll let you guys mold that over because that's a freaking good deal for this bike. I'm not saying build it yourself because it did, 
you know, it did take months and months and months to actually get this thing finished. So I won't recommend it to everybody, but if you have somebody who knows what they're doing, Lord Kurt, in my case, this guy freaking killed it because he knew how to build this battery pack and I had I knew nothing about it. So I had somebody helping me out and even so, it took me a couple months. Uh, it took us a couple months of hard work to, to hammer this thing out. But And again, to put that into a little bit of perspective for you guys, the starting price for the lowest end zero motorcycle is $9,000. The closest one would be the DSR, which is, starts at $15,495. So getting this all said and done, you know, for just under $5,000. But anyway, I definitely will be doing a video about how to do this DIY for all you DIYers out there, what I would have done differently, how I would source the bike and get the upgrades and all that kind of stuff. I'll be doing a separate video about that. So all you DIYers out there, just stay tuned. You guys will get that coming at you soon. But for now, I'm definitely just gonna enjoy this thing after the, the you know three months of hard work we've been putting into it. I'm just gonna enjoy it for a bit, ride it around. And I hope you guys also enjoyed the journey as much as I did. I, I really loved bringing you guys along. And seriously, from the bottom of my heart, I am so appreciative that this thing made my channel grow as much as it did. So thank you all so much for watching, seriously. All right, well, all that being said, guys, make sure to check out my Instagram if you do wanna see more like live up to date kind of posts on this thing and my next projects. I'm still doing some projects on this, so guys, make sure to stay tuned. But also there's a parts list in the description below. If you guys wanna check out all the parts that I put on this thing, they're all down there. All right, well, that's it for this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next video.